Reeves Test Customs. Today we're having a look at a new drifter from BND Racing out of Vietnam. Um, there's been quite a lot of hype around this chassis and they've sent us out a pre-production unit to have a look at. So obviously being a pre-production unit there are stuff that's going to change in the final version but let's have a look what we've got so far. So we'll start at the back here. As you can see top mount motor and for your keen eye viewers you may recognize these gears. Uh, if you've run some cheaper stuff this is a HSP um, pinion and diff. Um, obviously a lot of the stuff will be changed in the final version when they manufacture their own parts. This is um, just in here sort of from prototyping. And so if we have a look underneath as you can see we've got a lot of adjustments in the arms and that's so you can adjust your track with it. Sort of can go from about I think they said about 185 mil out to 200 mil wide. Obviously that might be with a zero mil offset rim. Um, obviously you can get a bit more width as well with different rims but it's nice to see you've got a little bit of track width adjustment which you don't normally see in many cars. So obviously with the track, uh, having adjustable track width you've obviously got to have, currently they've got dog bones in them because obviously if you're fixed at one end you're going to pull, pull out of the cup to adjust it. So I believe in their final version they're either going to have adjustable universals or maybe they'll just sell different length dog bones depending on your width. I'm not sure 100% but I'm sure they will address that at the state um, when they get to that point but dog bones for testing is fine so we go back to here where the battery mounts across here they have currently two positions to mount it sideways but I know that they are also working on running it lengthways as well so you can run it there and I think they might be putting a couple more positions to bring it forward as well so you can get your balance where you need it All right, so we have a look at the front here so there's banks back in the middle uh, there's no sliding rack or anything fancy on this, it's just your normal wiper setup um, which we've just installed the servo so you can actually see how much lock this thing actually gets now it's got pretty good lock on it compared to some other cars that are on the market um, up the top you can see you've got your adjustment here for your caster as well so there's heaps of adjustment built on the scale once again upper arms, lower arms on this are adjustable for your track width and also got a couple of holes in your hubs as well to adjust things now there's a couple of things I've found on this just we'll pop the wheel off and have a look a bit closer at the hubs take this thing off there's one key feature I've noticed on this you don't actually run a bearing on the outside which I found so far with running the supplied plastic ones I'm not sure if they're going to give you proper clamp on ones but when you put them on and you pull down, obviously it pulls that right up in there where it actually binds up. So obviously you really you probably can't with get any spaces in there to stop that bottoming out either with how much gap there is there. There's not really a lot of gap to put a spacer. So I'm not sure if that's something they're addressing in the final version. You would hope so. Because otherwise you can't run these style nuts which have got your serrated edges. Because you've got to tighten them up otherwise they'll fall off. And if you do that, it binds up your wheel and we've had a look at the rear one and the rear one is the same same sort of setup and as you can see they've actually made this part on the hub is actually separate as well I'm not sure what the reasoning behind that if it's there for easier manufacturing I'm not sure but there's another key feature that I have seen as well there is no adjustment on the um, toe on the back it's fixed so I'm not, I know that they are designing a new set of arms as well, which I believe they've got them so they pivot off this point. So maybe they will update this with their new set of arms. And also in an updated version I've seen, they actually run a full chassis uh, top plate all the way through, which bends around your motor as well. So it replaces, removes all of that. And it gives it a lot cleaner look as well. Now, you probably also might have noticed the shocks here. They are HSP ones, but they are looking at developing their own shocks, which will be based off their HSP shock bodies, but with their own internals to make them smooth and also keep the price down. Because obviously in Vietnam, they can't just go and buy everything off the shelf, so they have to try to manufacture as much as they can with what they can pick up. Now also, one other thing that impressed me is how, how little play there actually is in that suspension. It is, it is quite tight considering it doesn't have any shims in it at all. And the front is very much the same. Look, there's virtually no play in that. And it's the same. The front's probably got the most play in it, which it's not really much at all. It's more one side than the other, which is, you know, 
It's good to see that they're still working to quite a tight tolerance considering they're only a small company. Now, there's one of the couple other things I've had issues with. Well, not issues, but they just need to be smoothed up. Um, their ball links and ball lens here are all, once again, HSP like a lot of this car is because obviously it's cheap, easy to get for them. Um, I know that they will be changing these in the final version over to something a little bit more substantial that doesn't have so much play and probably a little bit more low profile because it does actually... If you've got your arms at the full droop, which obviously you're not always going to be running there, it does actually just catch on the top. But that's mainly because you've got a um, button head screw in that it's catching on just just fractionally, which is obviously not ideal. Um, and also, you probably will notice these screws in here. We get a better angle of it. The screws there are they're not just to hold the arms together. They're actually what they've got sitting there to stop your steering. So they're your steering locks. Obviously, they'll probably replace this with something a lot nicer. Um, but you know, they're there to serve a purpose for now for you know testing to make sure everything's right before they go into full production. Now I know that they've also been looking at doing a few different things. Um, they're looking at a few different colours. Obviously this is the dark purple. They're looking at a red, a blue, a lighter purple as well. And I think they're possibly a green. So they've been putting up a lot of polls in different forums. Just trying to get some input on what people want to see. The other thing I know that they are doing is the shock towers themselves. They've got some thicker units coming which have got a lot more adjustment. They'll have two rows of um, holes to give you heaps more play to suit you know different length shocks because I mean they, they've also researched into shock length as well so they've got it set up so you'll be able to run any shock length you want and really personalize this car to your settings now another thing I know that they've, they've talked about whether it's confirmed or not is also making a rear mount configuration like a D5 as well so it'll be nice to have a car that you can set up exactly how you want it. If you guys haven't already checked them out, you know, have a look at them on Facebook. This is their Facebook page is here. Um, they manufacture a lot of other parts at the moment for YD2s. Um, they've got magnetic body posts. They're also working on fully adjustable arms, which are going to work on the D5, Yokomo, anything like that. Um, they are only a small company, and they're you know they're fairly new. I believe this car's been in development for about six months so far, and as you can see, you know it's. They've done quite a good job of it so far. Hey yo. So in the next video we're going to get all the electrics put into this and we're going to take it down to the track and see what it's like. Obviously, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time setting this up to get it right. There's a few other things we're going to change such as the um, metal spur gear here. Because obviously it's going to be quite loud. Um, I know that a lot of them are testing with it, but they're probably not testing at a track and I'm pretty sure it'll be quite annoying listening to the gear. So I'm going to change that out, get everything mounted. Um, we won't be running it with a body just to play around because obviously we're going to do a lot of changes um, so hopefully you sort of two three weeks we'll get everything together get it down to the track get some video together so keep an eye out for that video um, until the next one have a good one